Hey everyone, this is Zan, and welcome to Dominion 6, at a glance. Today we'll talk about Machaka, Reign of Sorcerers. Their summary is that they are a nation of African-inspired stealthy assassins, spies, spider-riding knights, and hoplites. Their magic access is strong and varied, if a little reliant on their capital. Their unit roster is mostly awful. Their saving grace is that their hoplites are actually pretty good. They have a lot more defense compared to Arcocephalian hoplites, a little bit more expensive, and do more damage. The pygmies are surprisingly good, especially if you give them archer buffs like Ignite Arrows. They also have access to Poison Arrow archers. It doesn't stack with the spell that gives you Poison Arrows, but it does stack with Ignite Arrows. Just note that it has to do damage to apply the poison. And they also have Spider Knights, which in Dominion 5 were pretty good. I feel they're kind of lackluster now in Dominion 6. Something is wrong with their mount, and it's not really doing the web spit. There's a little trick. You can put them in a, in a group with archers, and they might do it more often. But so, something about them just doesn't feel right here in Dominion 6 now. And finally, the most important unit on their roster is going to be their Black Hunter Sacred. This has received a major facelift compared to Dominions 5 where before this Venomous, Fa Venomous Fang's attack didn't scale with strength, and now it does, which is fantastic. And they, the rider itself also got a falchion over a spear. So overall, the Black Hunter has turned into an absolute menace of the Middle Age, whereas before they were kind of a joke, an expensive joke. And when compared to other Sacred Calvary of the Age, and really most of the game, the Hunter Spiders actually have very good magic resistance. And that's going to help them stay relevant as the game progresses and more save or suck spells are introduced. Moving on to the commanders, we actually have pretty good leadership values on their spider lords, their regular commanders. They all have this morale bonus. They're all armored, shielded, have helmets. It's a pretty good package. The nation also has pretty good priests, holy twos, screwed anywhere. They have stealthy mage spies, so you don't feel bad about actually making these in your Castles, and they can be very oppressive if you incite unrest en masse on your opponent. The nation also gets assassins, although there are only capital recruitment, which is unfortunate because you're going to be stressed in your capital a lot. You have to choose between these assassins, the less strong but monster summoning spider sorceress, the Anansi, which is a stealthy shapeshifter, spy, that is primarily your, gonna, your, your big glamour mage, and then the black sorcerer, which is your primary earth mage. And earth is a big deal in this nation, this is your only real access to earth. You can get earth, lower earth outside of this guy. And these guys actually have a nifty ability in that they transform into hunter spiders when they're wounded, which makes them extremely durable and resistant to, say, remote attacks like flames from the sky. Outside of their capital, they have Forest Recruit Witch Doctors, which are kind of cool. You know, I like my foreign recruitment. And the very powerful but also very expensive Sorcerers, they can do a little bit of everything, but I think their primary purpose is going to be introduce high nature magic. And with that, we can move on to their National Summons. They didn't have one in Dominions 5, but they do now in Dominion 6. It's the Hunter Spider, which you'll recognize this is literally just the same mount that your Capital Recruit Sacreds are on. The difference is, is that it is now a magical being and it is no longer stupid. Stupid meaning that it can accidentally attack your own units, you know, some friendly fire, or just do nothing for the turn. This isn't a very expensive spell. I think it's two gems per hunter spider, and depending on how strong your bless is, that's really good. Honestly, even if you didn't have a bless or these weren't sacred, they would still be worth summoning for their high map move strength, hit points, magic resistance. I can go on. They're very good. Summon those. For Machaka's recommended spells, we're going to be a little bit all over the place. First, we're going to start with Ignite Arrows, because you can recruit so many pygmies, and this scales so well with the amount of them, because it's going to add an armor-piercing fire damage to every hit that they make, regardless of if they do damage and ignoring shields. Next, we're going to go to Nest of Asps. Swarm is a pretty strong spell, and I feel like this is just Swarm, but better, because now if the bug or I guess in this case Spider, does do damage. It's going to be a Death Poison 35 damage and a Decay effect, which is strong. 
As always, if a nation has access to Howl, I'm likely going to put that here because that's going to draw fire away from your troops as wolves come into the field, draw fire, draw evocations, distract troops and mages. It's just a fantastic spell overall. One of the new tricks that we're going to be able to do as Bachaka in Dominion 6 is going to be group luck. I believe that luck is one of the strongest buffs in the game, actually. So having this added to the nation that didn't used to have it is pretty good to me. I would always recommend doing it. Now, evocation-wise, Shadow Blast and Banefire are both insanely strong. Especially in Dominions 5, they were strong, but now in Dominion 6, both of them are so much better. And you're one of the few nations that has access to Banefire, so I, I would definitely do that, especially on turn 1 or 2 before your opponent has any defenses up. Back to our buffs. Uh, Group Iron Skin, Gift of Giant Strength, Furious Warriors. It's just going to help keep maybe dense hoplite formations or even your spiders or pygmies alive and landing more hits in melee. And then finally, a neat trick that this nation is uniquely capable of doing is going to be a combination of Gift of Splendor and Nightmare, Nightmare Masks. You're going to need a lot of mages to cast this because the area of effect, especially for Nightmare Mask, isn't too large. But what it's going to do is going to give your units awe and fear, or I guess dread, at the same time. So it's going to require morale checks for them to get attacked, and meanwhile you're going to be lowering their morale and potentially causing routes because you have dense hoplite formations or even dense pygmy formations. It's crazy. Uh, it's a pretty cool set of spells, and I feel like Machaka's spell diversity has really gotten a facelift. For the pretender design of Machaka, I'm actually going to recommend something of a light but powerful bless over just going full bless. That's not to say that you can't go full into scales or full into a bless. The nation's actually very versatile right now and very strong in a lot of ways. And I think both of them can work. So here I'm going to have Too Tall to Ride, the Colossal Fetish, which is a pretender I actually took on a big YouTuber blitz. Unfortunately, I don't have the recording for it because I had the mindset from Dominions 5 that Machaka in the Middle Age was kind of food, that people were just going to see me and attack me because I was weak. And actually, the combination of larger hard skin Black Hunters gave me the best expansion out of everybody, and I was able to fight a very powerful heroism vampiric weapons plus Asphodel, and just, it was devastating. I never even got to use the Colossal Fetish, which is probably one of the strongest Defender Titan pretenders you can get. The Death Path on it, you can pick whatever you want. I had this idea that I would still get fear on him. The other option I have, which I think is going to be really, really cool, is going to be Stealth Spiders, the Great Spider. And here we're going to mess around a lot with Obfuscate, Quiet Stride, and Larger to get us stealthy Black Hunter squads that can go around and attack and escape without your opponent being able to do anything. But also, very importantly, this is going to synergize a lot with your national stealthy spies. It's going to bump them up to, I think, 120 stealth value each. And you're going to be able to incite a lot of unrest in every single one of your opponent's provinces, reducing their gold income by a lot, forcing them to devote patrollers to get rid of your spies, and ultimately just be a nuisance that is draining their gold and will prevent them from making more mages, making units, or generally fighting you. I think it's a great way to leverage how strong the Black Hunters are and how good the national roster can be without focusing too hard or sacrificing too much for a major bless. Finally, when we move on to the gameplay, in the early game, I used to think Machaka was food, but right now you are the hunter. So I recommend clearing your cap circle as soon as you can with your spider sacreds, and get some sort of match of them and actually rush your opponents. While you're doing this, one of the things that you can do is if you prioritize forests during expansion, you can actually drop 600 gold labs on them and immediately start recruiting some of your mages from them. They're forest recruit, and you can also add in forest recruit poison archers. And this is going to help you fight uh, an opponent, or at least have an early lead on them, because they're spending time building forts and you were not. You also have access to spider assassins. That can either help you take thrones that are hard, it can help you fight an opponent, especially if you rush them, because your spider assassins can scale walls. So while you're sieging down their fort, your assassins can go in and actually assassinate their mages. So I highly recommend using the tempo from not needing to build an early fort to go fight a neighbor, especially if they have cavalry, which tends to have a hard time against Machaka and spiders due to their web attack. Also, keep an eye out for lizard shamans. For as great as the nation's 
path diversity is, you don't have Astral, and there's going to come a time in the game where you might want Astral. So if you see Lizard Shamans, definitely go for them. By the mid-game, I highly recommend amassing a large amount of Stealthy Spies and place them ahead of time in your intended target. As soon as the war starts, or maybe just before, you want to start inciting the unrest. This is going to start pumping up their unrest. The more unrest they have, the harder it is to patrol out your spies. If you see them moving a large force around to maybe patrol out your spy, I mean one, you're going to be happy about this because that means that force is not attacking you. But two, just move your spy around. And especially if you went with the Quiet Stride Obfuscate Bless, it's going to be hard to remove you. Anyways, around now in the middle game, you want to start leveraging your magical versatility, whether that's casting a lot of glamour spells, a lot of earth, fire, death even. You can go a lot of routes with this nation. And then just keep in mind that, you know, use what assassins you can, but also try to keep them alive because each assassin you recruit is a black hunter you did not recruit, or a black sorcerer, and those are very, very strong. Traditionally, this is going to be your strongest phase of the game, I don't know how much glamour is going to affect the late game, so maybe I'm wrong here. If you get really good mages too, you probably want to twice board them just to keep them around longer. And finally, in the late game, it's worth noting that your capital mages are very resilient to remote attacks because they have that spider form. Your spider riders, unfortunately, aren't as much, but hopefully you've been casting that god brood spell to, cast, to, to summon your own sacred spiders, and those are going to be very resilient to Flames from the Sky, and so on. You have very good access to late game Glamour, Death, and Nature, which are, alongside Astral and Blood, probably the traditional late game power paths, I guess. And mainly at this point, you want to keep up the pressure, be relentless with spies, trade and prioritize your Nature Gems so they can get just more Sacred Spiders. They're very resilient to a lot of late game crap, they have high magic resistance, and they're just very strong overall. And keep in mind, not having Astral can be scary with Mindhunt floating around. So definitely try to find a way to get into Astral. If desperate measures are needed, and you can empower some of your Earth Mages and summon Golems. But it's hopefully in the earlier mid game you've secured some way of getting anti magic or some way to stop mind hunts by this point. Oh boy, that ran a little longer than I was expecting, but that's going to be the Middle Age Machaka at a glance. I think they got a major facelift from Dominions 5 into Dominion 6, and somehow now they're one of the more powerful nations of the Middle Age. I think it's pretty crazy. They were a blast to play in the Blitz, and I wouldn't mind playing them again in a longer form game or even another Blitz. It was definitely pretty cool. Anyways, if you guys like the content and want more at a glance videos, please like and subscribe. That helps me know that these are the kind of videos that you want me to do. And with that, I will see you guys next time.